Well, Professor Clements with you as we again consider circuits and I want to take a look at circuits that are a little bit more complicated in this unit. Uh, again, the OpenStax College Physics book, we're in Chapter 21. Um, I'd like you to look at this circuit drawing and tell me, can you see some resistors in series or parallel? And you should say yes. There are series here, the R1 and the R2. That's a series arrangement. You could add those and uh, obtain a single resistance value in this branch of the circuit. R2 and R3 are in series with each other, and you could add their values and get a single resistor here. So we'd have a resistor in the top branch, a resistor in the middle branch, a resistor in the bottom branch. Are any of those pairs in series or parallel? And the answer is no. So we can't use our previous method of uh, reducing this circuit down to a single battery and a single resistor and then work our way back step by step. Instead, we'll have to use a set of rules called Kirchhoff's rules that relate to current and potential difference around the circuit. Our goal is to, in this case, we have three unknowns, the current in the top branch, the current in the middle branch of the circuit and the current in this bottom branch of the circuit. That's three unknowns. Mathematically, then we need three equations. So we can combine those equations and solve for the unknowns, the three unknowns. So that's our task. Use Kirchhoff's rules. Write down a number of equations equal to the number of unknown currents. And the typical problems we'll run across will be three unknown currents. So that's where we're headed and let's take a look at uh, some of Kirchhoff's rules. One of Kirchhoff's rules is the rule at a junction regarding currents. The rule is the amount of current that we have coming into a node equals the amount of current we have leaving the node. So I1 is coming into this node the current here then splits. Part of it goes on the easy resistance path. Part of it uh, goes on the harder resistance path. Uh, you could think of it that way. But we have a uh, equality. The amount of current coming in equals the current coming out. This is really physically saying that electrons are not generated at a node and electrons are not used up at a node. So we have a really kind of a conservation of charge. The amount of charge coming into the node equals the charge leaving the node. So I1 equals I2 plus I3. That'll be a common equation you'll see in the Kirchhoff's rules type of problems. Another rule is that as we go around any one loop in the circuit, a complete loop, we'll start someplace the sum of the potential changes add to zero. So if we go across a battery in a circuit starting from the negative pole and going to the positive pole, that's a plus potential difference. As we go through a resistor, that's a potential drop that we would calculate if we had all the numbers. It would be I times the little r value, but a potential drop. Uh, we're going to assume our wires are ideal, no potential drop. We get to another resistor, there's a potential drop. We get to another resistor, there's a potential drop that brings us back to our starting point. The sum of all the changes in potential is zero around the loop. So in your drawing, this shows a particular loop here. In the problems that uh, we saw the, the diagram for, um, there would be, you know, three choices for loops. We could start uh, just at this resistor R2 and go around the loop back to that same point. We could start at this uh, node, go through R1, come back to uh, the node where we started, or we could start here and we go around the outside. So there are three, uh, three loops that we might employ and write down all the changes in potential you need to remind yourself that whenever we go across a resistor in the direction of current, so if we label current coming this way and we just take a reasonable guess before we solve the problem, 
we take a reasonable guess of the direction of the current. And as the current uh, interacts with the resistor, the place where the current comes into the resistor, you should label with a plus sign on your diagrams. Um, these eyes that you draw, these currents, these uh, suggested currents, they do not have to be the correct direction. When you solve the problem, you'll get values for the eyes, the eye in the top loop, the eye in the middle loop, the eye in the bottom loop, or bottom branch of the circuit, I should say. If uh, any of those are a negative number, that just means your choice of direction for the arrow was wrong, and you'd simply reverse that arrow in your drawing. Uh, so you, you write down uh, or draw in your, your diagram guesses for the direction of the current. So this would be our I2. I'm going to make this one I1. And down here, let's go this way for I3. It doesn't matter the uh, direction you draw the current arrows to, uh, to begin with. Uh, very often, I'll draw them in the direction of conventional current with the, uh, the way the battery is arranged, but that's not a requirement. You can draw the arrow any direction that you wish. Something that's important about these currents is that I1 exists um, from where the branch starts, so here, and I1 stops over here. I2 starts right here and continues over to here. And I3 would start here, go through the battery, these two resistors, and stop over here. Um, so you take your drawing, you simplify uh, series resistors, we'd add these up. You draw the eyes and label the direction of the arrow. And then when you see a current going into a resistor, you put a plus sign on the uh, uh, entry side of that resistor and we'll talk about voltage drops as we go through a resistor in the direction of current there's a voltage drop V equals I times R and this will just be in symbols regarding the I's um, most often you'll have a number for the number of ohms of the resistor 3 ohms 10 ohms 12 ohms whatever it might be so uh, that's the the process that we go through in labeling our sketch so we have the current uh, rule at the nodes, at the junction. Uh, the sum of the current coming in equals the sum of the current going out. And then we have this rule regarding potentials. Around any closed loop in our drawing, the sum of the changes in potential is zero. We have some positive potentials as we go across a battery in the direction of the current from negative to positive. It's going to be a... Um, a positive jump in potential. And you just pick any point that you want to start uh, uh, your transverse of the circuit and labeling the potential changes. So we'd have plus 18 here. There's a potential drop here of the um, I times the uh, resistance value and potential drop, potential drop, and brings us back to zero. So we'll write down equations that describe change in potential, and we'll write down two of those in uh, the problem that we've just been looking at. And then the junction equation provides our third equation. Then we'll use techniques of algebra to solve that system of equations. Three equations, three unknowns, and it's not a difficult process to, uh, to come up then with uh, uh, the results for the three unknown currents. Um, Here's a reminder on the uh, way to calculate the potential drops. Um, current comes into the resistor. We get a potential change that's a negative. We get a drop in potential. Um, if we happen to be um, going and analyzing the circuit and we trace around the circuit in a direction that's opposite to the current, so as we're analyzing the changes potential, we're tracing through the circuit in this way, opposite to the uh, direction of current. That's actually going to make an increase in potential from the left to the right side on this particular resistor. Um, if we're analyzing the circuit and going across uh, the battery and uh, off to the right, as I've drawn there, that's a plus change in the voltage. 
if we happen to be going uh, through our, our wire in this direction, that'll be a negative change in the voltage. We're going from plus to the minus terminal of the battery. So that'll take some practice to, uh, to accomplish. Um, here's an example that's a little bit, uh, um, you know, too much work to do it in this video, but I will have some videos of sample problems that use Kirchhoff's rules. So stay tuned for that, and uh, that's where we're going to end. This uh, concept of using Kirchhoff's rules, there's the junction rule that the current coming in equals the sum of the currents going out. And then there's the potential rule, uh, where as we go around a closed loop, closed path, we account for changes in potential. All those changes will add up to zero. We have to get back to the same potential where we started. And we'll do two of those, and uh, then the junction rule provides our third equation. So take a look at the video I'm recording for practice with that.